second to last, our penultimate session of this, the uh, second IDTX. Um, with us is, is Kevin. He's going to be showing us how to go from PowerPoint to e-learning in minutes. This is uh, this is definitely one out there where you want to be able to save some time, be efficient, and really start focusing on that ROI in the business. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, get the heck off the screen and hand over the reins. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm Kevin Siegel. And uh, this is, the, as Tom said, the session on taking your PowerPoint content uh, into e-learning. Uh, I'm, I'm enamored by this utility, iSpring Suite, which is a PowerPoint plugin. And so I'm going to show you how you can take your PowerPoint content directly from PowerPoint and no fooling. It's really fast and really easy right to iSpring Suite. And what you have to think about, uh, if you want to make it more complicated than just taking PowerPoint to e-learning, how much more interactivity do you want to add to your content? So you can certainly spend a lot of time on creating the e-learning, but if the content's ready to go, there's no faster way, in my opinion, getting your content out to the universe than using a utility like iSpring Suite. So I've been using it for years, fell in love with it, and I've written a couple of books about it. Let me tell you about myself. So my name is Kevin Siegel. I'm the president and founder of Icon Logic. I am a certified technical trainer, certified master trainer, certified online training professional. And I have uh, been doing e-learning now for, for 20 years before the term e-learning was even being used. Back in my day, it was called CBT, computer-based training. Uh, that name matured and became e-learning over the years. And I, I develop in e-learning still. I'm still a full-time developer. I get my hands dirty. And I write books on this stuff as well. And I've written a couple of books on iSpring Suite. And I've written books on Adobe Captivate, Articulate Storyline, TechSmith Camtasia. So I use all these tools and I often get asked in, in comparing them, which one is the easiest and I got I to gotta say, of all of them, if your content is already in Microsoft PowerPoint, iSpring Suite ranks right up there for ease of use. I am kind of curious, uh, first of all, if you want to follow along and do some of the activities that I'm going to do, all you need is PowerPoint. All you need is iSpring Suite 10 installed on your computer, and I'll show you how it looks in just a second. And there are assets you can grab from my Dropbox. And Tom, I believe you had put it into the share so people know how to get to it. So we'll look for him to make that available to you if you want to. Now, the only project I'm going to open from that download is a finished project to show you what the, what the interface looks like. But I'm going, to, I'm going to build a PowerPoint presentation from scratch. So really, all you really need to participate today is PowerPoint. Uh, I've got the most recent version of PowerPoint, Office 365, and I keep it updated, and iSpring Suite 10, and I'll show you how it manifests itself. So I am curious um, where you all are located. I am uh, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, you know, the home of the soon-to-be Super Bowl champion Cincinnati Bengals, and I'd love for you all to let me know where you're located uh, around, the, around the world. You know, that would be awesome. Uh, so, uh, so let me know uh, where you all located. Uh, uh, you got oh somebody from uh, Michigan. Rock on, Jonathan. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the agenda for today, and give me your feedback on that. Uh, oh, there's the uh, iSpring Suite book. If you'd like to get it from the Icon Logic website, it takes you right to Amazon.com. Uh, the uh, PDF uh, in the materials that Tom will give you access to. Uh, that's a clickable link. So these few slides that I have uh, is actually clickable, take you right where you need to go. So here's the agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a, uh, a, a project in iSpring Suite, which is really make a PowerPoint presentation, right? Really easy. I'm going to show you how to work with audio, believe it or not. So we're, we're going to make a PowerPoint presentation, just four or five slides together. We're going to record some audio, and I'll show you how I can leverage PowerPoint's uh, some a speaker notes area for voiceover audio. And we're going to add a quick quiz about whatever subject we create, and we'll work on that together. And then I'm going to show you how to publish, okay? So uh, give me some feedback, everyone. How does that agenda sound? Does that sound good? Give you a general general idea about uh, what iSpring Suite can do and why I think it's so uh, awesome. Give me some feedback in that comments panel. Huh? Uh, is that rubbish? 
not at all what you were hoping for. I hope it is. Haven't seen anything yet, but I'm going to I'm going to hope that it's uh, it's rocking and rolling for you. Uh, so John says, let's do it. All right. On we go. So um, normally I would say I can't show you anything about uh, PowerPoint or iSpring Suite unless I do a huge lecture. And I uh, show you 97 slides with uh, a bunch of uh, bulleted lists on my PowerPoint. And that wouldn't be cool. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, I have no PowerPoint deck for you. This is all demo. So uh, other than this is how you get a hold of me post session if you need um, if you need help with iSpring Suite or you need help with any of the other tools, contact me. Uh, and this is a clickable link if you get the PowerPoint from that link that Tom put into the uh, chat pod. So let me get uh, let me get rid of this. Don't need it. And uh, instead, here is a PowerPoint presentation ready to go. And what I, you all can do if you want to follow along with me and you grab those files real quick and you have the iSpring Suite plugin, which you can get a 30-day trial from iSpring, uh, this is the presentation called Aqua Safety. And it's just a real simple PowerPoint presentation that if you, if you kind of look at my screen here, you see it's not doing anything too wonky. It's just PowerPoint with some videos, right? Well, the, the thing about the PowerPoint presentation that makes this potentially e-learning. So, so here's the thing about trying to use PowerPoint to create e-learning. When you get done with your PowerPoint presentation, let's just say it looks fantastic, right? And I'm more about the content than I am about how the presentation looks. Content's king, really good content. Then you want to make your PowerPoint look good. And I got some suggestions for you to avoid that dreaded, you probably have heard this term, death by PowerPoint. We want to avoid that. But first and foremost, I want good content. And then you do it in PowerPoint, and that's fantastic. But how do you get it to your end users who might be using any kind of device to consume your content? For, and, and give me some feedback in the comments panel. Are your end users going to be doing desktop, laptop, tablets, phones, or all of the above? Give me some idea about that. Uh, and uh, Jonathan, I see you put in there that they're going to be using a learning management system, LMS. So, okay, so that is awesome. I'm glad that you said that. Because if you output PowerPoint content, the best that you can hope to do is upload your PowerPoint content into your learning management system, right? As an asset to the course. But there's no way for the PowerPoint presentation to send a signal off to your learning management system, LMS, that the learner has passed the quiz. PowerPoint does now have quizzing capabilities, but the tracking component of that is potentially a problem, right? So PowerPoint doesn't have the ability to output a format that you can guarantee would be work on all devices, Mac, PC, Linux, Unix, browsers, phones, everything. You really need today HTML5 output to do that. And PowerPoint simply doesn't do it. Plus PowerPoint beyond clicking a button that might take you someplace in the presentation would hardly be considered an e-learning powerhouse. So how do you bridge the gap between awesome presentations and making your content available for a wide audience and tracking potentially using SCORM as an example, your content? Utilities like iSpring Suite. So if you look at my slides, you'll see these are just standard PowerPoint slides. There's nothing that's going to win any, any possible major awards. I don't think it's a bad looking presentation. Okay. And I can neither take credit nor blame for this one. This one was given to me and we modified it to work with iSpring Suite. So this was given to me by a vendor years ago. Now, You'll notice that if you install iSpring Suite, you get this additional tab in PowerPoint. And I'm kind of doing the old era, the circle feature using Windows here to highlight that iSpring Suite 10 tab. So all you do is create your PowerPoint presentation, right? And as soon as you're done making your PowerPoint presentation, you install iSpring Suite 10 or you have it installed before. Then there'll be an iSpring Suite 10 folder. Now, I want you to keep in mind that if Rachel, a Rachel, makes a PowerPoint presentation called Rachel, that'll be a Rachel.pptx. Makes sense. Rachel, you probably used PowerPoint before, right? 
the minute Rachel goes to the iSpring Suite 10 tab and does anything using any of these tools like record audio over here on the far left, iSpring Suite's going to make another folder called Rachel that will have all of the assets in it. And let me just show you real quick from a project structure. In that iSpring Suite 10 folder that I asked you all to download if you want to follow along, the file that I've opened here is called Aqua Safety. There it is. It's a PPTX. Do you notice also there is an Aqua Safety demo folder? I did not create that folder. iSpring Suite did. The iSpring Suite tool. So if you get my book and you download these data assets, these data assets support the book. Here's the book, by the way. I think it's awesome. If you do that, every time you make your own stuff, it'll make a folder to support what you're doing. If you use my assets, I've already created the folder structure for you. Okay, so food for thought. Now, I'm going to actually show you what you would do in iSpring Suite if you want to create HTML5 output. It's incredibly difficult. Check this out. There is a publish category in iSpring Suite 10, right? You click publish. And that's going to bring up a dialog box saying, okay, what do you want to output? And for instance, are you trying to track this? Uh, Jonathan was talking about learning management system. LMS is one of the components, okay? I'm actually publishing to my computer. And when you publish... The only thing you can publish is either HTML5 or video. And let me tell you the difference between the two. If you publish HTML5, you're going to basically publish a website. The website will include interactivity, such as a quiz, such as all kinds of awesome interactive features you can add using iSpring Suite. And just so you know, iSpring Suite does dialogue simulations, learner interactions, quizzes. I'm pointing at these options over here on the insert tab. And this is something that kind of stunned me that iSpring Suite does this. It actually creates video demonstrations very similar to TechSmith Camtasia, very similar to what Articulate Storyline does and Adobe Captivate. But the screen recordings for videos does something that only Adobe Captivate does. It adds annotations to your screen recording. So if you go to the file menu in your software and you choose page setup, file page setup, iSpring Suite will put the words, go to the file menu and choose page setup for you. It's the only utility besides Adobe Captivate in its demonstration mode that does that. I found that to be really awesome and inspiring. The other output format you can do here is video. So if you're following along with me and you've opened up the Aqua Safety demo project, I want to remind you we went to the publish options on the iSpring Suite 10 tab. PowerPoint doesn't have these tools, okay? And one thing I do want you to keep in mind, if you leverage um, uh, iSpring Suite to take your PowerPoint presentation to the next level, then when you go to preview your project, you wouldn't be going to the slideshow menu using PowerPoint anymore. The minute you start adding iSpring Suite features, you'd be using the preview tool on the iSpring Suite 10 tab to make sure that what you're adding is actually going to work in a web browser. So make a note of that, a mental note. Now, Jonathan, you made a note about iSpring Suite adding the... Um, the annotations. It adds the annotations to its demo mode and its assessment mode, but it has just video only, and that's just a raw video. So, uh, and I think it's fantastic that that it'll its storyline will add the annotations to the other modes, but not to the video mode. And neither does Camtasia. Camtasia, you got to add the annotations later. So it's something really, really cool. So uh, I went to publish here, and it bought up that publish dialog box. Okay, now I'm going to go HTML5 and I'm picking a destination. I browse and the folder uh, is, that I'm publishing to is that published publish projects here folder in iSpring Suite 10. So if you click browse and find your iSpring 10 data folder and then open up publish projects, you'll have the same path as me. And then you click publish and iSpring Suite will output a website. Now to save us some time, if you all are going to do that, go ahead. It'll take about a minute.
But to save you a minute of time, I, through the magic of television, very much like watching those cooking shows, you know, when you watch Rachel Ray, she's talking about this beautiful uh, turkey she's basting and all that. And then she pulls right out of the oven so you don't have to wait. I already published it for you. To be truthful, whenever I do these software demonstrations, you know that's when things can go wrong. And I didn't want to take a chance of a crash as I was trying to trying to demo this. So uh, I, it is worth noting that uh, of all the e-learning development tools that I've used, iSpring Suite 10 is very, very stable. Very rarely do I have any kind of a crash caused by iSpring Suite. If I was going to have a crash, it's because maybe my system was unstable. So here is the finished website. I'm going to open it up. And very clean structure. It puts everything inside data. That's the videos, the tracking mechanism, everything. And there's a file here called index.html. I'm going to open it up just to show you what the final output looks like. And I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to mute the audio because this guy's talking. I don't know if you all can hear him talking through my, um, through my headset. But he's talking, so it's got some video here in what is called the sidebar. Uh, and it's got interactivity here. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm not going to wait for him to finish talking. And you can see now very clean interface. This came directly from Microsoft PowerPoint, including the builds that I created, uh, animations so that these images are popping up on screen in sync with what that dude is saying uh, live. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and click next. And now there's some videos here, right? So you can include video in your output, right? I think it's a pretty good looking presentation, all things being considered. I'm gonna go past all these because there is a quiz. So multiple choice question, and you can decide to have the background follow what your master slides are doing, which is what I did here. I'll just make a decision and click submit. Uh, and then I'm gonna continue, I got that one wrong. And actually, it's gloves prevent the most accidents. That one I remember. Look at that. Nailed it. So you control the quiz questions and the feedback. And I only had two quiz questions in this project. View the results. Tells me how I did. Click next. And I'm all done now. And this dude's talking some more. What do you guys think? Pretty cool. PowerPoint. Right to e-learning. I already published it. And, and by the way, if you followed along with me just now, you are already, we're what, 10 minutes in? You're already a published e-learning author. Think about it, Jane. You're already published, just like that. But I think it'd be helpful if you all put a project together, right? So this is all pie in the sky, good stuff. But unless I can build my own without a lot of stress, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm gonna close my output here. I'm going to minimize that publish folder because I'll be publishing something else to that publish projects here folder before we're done. And I'm going to go to the file menu and choose close. And I truly want nothing up my sleeve. So I'm going to go back into PowerPoint actually and get out of my slideshow. And I'm just going to go file new. And I'm going to make a blank presentation. Honestly, there's nothing up my sleeves here. There's nothing up my sleeves. Now, I'm trying to come up with a content that we all can create together and have a little fun with it, right? And who doesn't like puppies? Do you like puppies? You like you like little 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 doggies? I have 3. Uh you can't see them, but two of them are here with me. They they have promised not to bark. The third one is as big as a house, a great Pyrenees, and she's outside because she doesn't agree. But the other two have said I won't bark. We're going to create a presentation all about puppies. Okay. So I'm just going to type here in my blank file and type puppy care. Right. Uh, the subtitle, Kevin Siegel presentation. You guys do something similar, okay? something similar launch powerpoint now uh, i want to bring in a graphic and here's the thing that i find so super compelling about powerpoint you know when you bring up camtasia and captivate and storyline they give you all these wonderful assets well first of all ispring suite if you go to the ispring suite tab 
has a collection of characters and backgrounds and objects and icons. And I do recommend that you all play around with that and, and see what you can, what you can build. But for goodness sakes, even if you didn't use iSpring Suite, you just wanted to use PowerPoint, right? And maybe take it into the other tools. Okay. My recommendation is use iSpring Suite because it's got the publishing component. If you go to the insert tab in PowerPoint, maybe you missed this, maybe you didn't. There is a, a, an option here for icons. I'm going to click it. It's on the um, illustrations tab of the insert insert tab on the ribbon illustrations group. Now I didn't click icons necessarily to bring in icons, but I find it really, really awesome that all these icons are available for me. And there's a concept I really love for you all to adopt. Iconography, iconography. Wouldn't it just be wonderful, Jonathan? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we stopped creating PowerPoint content with a headline, a subtitle and a bulleted list? The next slide, a headline, a subtitle, and a bulleted list. This is 2022, people. That technique died in 1997. Presenting visual stimulation to your learners is what's in vogue. It really makes all the sense in the world. And I didn't bring you to icons necessarily to put an icon just in just yet. But if you check this out, there are... Uh, there are Ill, there are images, and I'm going to type puppy. And when I choose puppy, you get all these wonderful pictures to choose from, right? These are high quality graphics. I'm telling you, they're fantastic, and they're free for you to use. The images you see here, either Microsoft is giving them to you directory, directly or they're co covered under common commons, so you're allowed to use them royalty-free, so you're not paying anything. So I'm going to select this one right here and click insert. And when I do that, what I also find incredible about PowerPoint is it gives you these incredible design ideas over on the right side of the screen. Why are you fighting against progress here and some great designs? And I got to tell you, many of these suggestions are better than I could do. I mean, look how cute these designs are. I'm going to go with this one. I mean, there's one slide done already. What do you think, huh? Jane, are you stressed out yet, man? Just let the, let the software do it. And you might even win national honors for design. Just don't tell anybody that you let PowerPoint do it, okay? It's awesome. Okay, so there's one slide. I did this in PowerPoint, right? Now, I'm going to insert uh, another slide. So insert, new slide. I'm going to go uh, title only. Title only. And I'm going to click where it says to add title. And I'm going to type lesson overview. You always should have a lesson overview slide. But here's what you typically do on your slides. You put in your slides a bulleted list. And I'm saying, Rachel, please don't do a bulleted list. Please do something else. And I know what Rachel's thinking. I know what you're thinking, Rachel. I feel you. You're like, listen, dude, this is all well and good, but how do you communicate what I'm going to teach them if I don't give them the information on the screen? Nobody's going to read the screen. Nobody wants to read the screen. They want to be visually stimulated and they want to hear you. So your voiceover should include what you're going to teach them, but you should have some visuals. So I'm going to go right back to the well, man. I'm going to click icons. I might find an icon representing what I'm going to teach people, but I'm going to go with images again because I just love these pictures. And I'm going to type puppy again. Watch, just watch, watch what PowerPoint does for me. It's like crazy. I'm going to pick three pictures. So I like the one here with the puppies uh, dressed for Halloween. Uh, this one's awesome. I think I, I have a hat like that. I'm going with that one. Uh, and uh, who doesn't like taking your puppy into the water? So you're, we're going to teach people how to keep your puppy safe on the water. We're going we're gonna to talk about dressing care for your puppy. We're going to talk about hats that work for your puppy. And we're going to talk about keeping your puppy safe in your canoe. I mean, look, I, I'm making this up as I go along. All right, folks, it just it doesn't matter what the content's going to be. I just want to show you how this whole process works. I'm going to click insert. Now it just dropped three pictures on the screen, okay? Now I know what you're thinking. Dude, now I got to worry about making these pictures look good. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Use your design ideas over on the right. So how about this? Boom. 
let the, let the software do it for me. That's pretty much what I would have done, right? I, I oh, okay, all right, Jonathan, you're you're a cynic. I get it. Okay, I'll go with this one. I mean, do you guys want to make this difficult on yourself to make great designs? Now, now, look, uh, five years ago, I would have said I'm not letting PowerPoint design my stuff because their themes were terrible. But whoever at Microsoft said, let's give them some design ideas. I'm like, wow, you didn't just do a little bit for me. You're doing a lot. You're almost making it that uh, company doesn't need me no more. Right? Just, just let PowerPoint do the whole thing. I love this. I love this. Okay. Now, I'm going to duplicate that slide. Just right-click duplicate. Anybody stressed out yet? And I'm going to change one word. Lesson review. Okay. So now I've got an introductory slide, a slide about what I'm going to teach people, a slide that tells the, the, my learners what they learn. This is Instructional Design 101, right? Uh, when you when you start to, beyond making sure that your content has context and is gonna is gonna make a difference in what your learners are doing uh, behavior wise, uh, job safety, whatever it is, I also want to have um, uh, tell them what I'm going to teach them, teach them, and then tell them what I taught them. It's instructional design 101. Okay. By the way, I think it's a really good idea to save. So I'm going to save this file with the name Puppy. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to slide number two. I'm going to insert a new slide. Hopefully you guys are following along with me if you feel like you'd like to. Once again, just a title. And I'm going to title this one. Uh, let's see. Picking your puppy. And once again, right back to the well I go. Going to go find myself some pictures. And so I'm going to pictures this time and choosing stock images. Brings you right back into this little screen here. So once again, I'm going to type puppy. Uh, I do recommend, by the way, from a visual design standpoint, that uh, if you're, if you're going to go with photographs, go with photographs. If you're going to go with uh, images or cartoons, go with cartoons. It is visually, can be visually distracting to waffle back and forth. So stick with one. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go with this one just because I think that dude's cute. And once again, right back to the well I go. Pick a design for me there, dude. There you have it. Uh, maybe I don't want that one. I'm going to go with just this one. I didn't want that red line. Okay. So I've got um, four slides. I think that's good enough to give you an idea. Look, we could spend an hour building slide after slide after slide. This is not a PowerPoint thing. I want to talk about uh, leveraging PowerPoint in iSpring Suite. And do you notice, by the way, we haven't gone into iSpring Suite yet, right? Haven't done that yet. It's coming. It's coming. Go to slide number one. I saved my work, by the way. Um, I save uh, to the paranoia level paranoia level. So uh, thank you, uh, Jane. Jane saying she agrees. Uh, less text, uh, images, you know, that kind of thing. And by the way, um, you know, if you don't think you're a designer, you don't think you could do graphic design, how simple is this slide three layout for a visual impact? How, how simple is that? It's just make the picture as big as the slide, make it cute, make it thought provoking and put a headline on there, maybe one word. So think about the best presentations that you go to when you've got someone up on stage, if they, if they bring up a PowerPoint deck and then they make the big sin of just reading the slide to you, bad news. Because at that point, you're like thinking, what, why, why are you here? Just give me the PowerPoint deck with all of your speaker notes and then I'll, I don't need you here. You're supposed to be adding something to the presentation, right? So speaking of adding something to the presentation, go to slide number one. It has been absolutely scientifically proven in research and my experience, and I've been at this for multiple decades, that if you put voiceover audio in your e-learning, it enhances the learner experience. Even if the voiceover audio is Bob, is there a Bob in this audience? And Bob doesn't think that Bob's voice is very good. Uh, give me some feedback. Anybody in this room think you have the most awesome voice ever? A good voice for voiceover audio? What do you think? Anybody? Give me some feedback. Anybody? Because look, there's a real famous um, <laughs> Thomas is why. Yes, I do. I'd love uh, Thomas to come off mute if we could do it and have Thomas go 
in a world gone mad. Do that thing you see in the movie theaters. There's a very famous actor who was interviewed and they said to this famous actor, what is the biggest regret of your life? And the, uh, the, the actor said, you know, my biggest regret is my voice. I just hate my voice. Oh, if I could change one thing about myself, be my voice. And the interviewer said, but Mr. Jones, you're Darth Vader. How can you not like your voice? The actor is James Earl Jones. Ever heard of him? Darth Vader. And if he hates his voice, we have no chance. But on the other hand, I've never really met anyone except maybe Kermit the Frog, who I couldn't listen to all day. And thinking of it now, I could listen to Kermit the Frog all day long. So I'm telling you right now, all of you have perfectly good voices. And if you think you can't do it, I Spring Sweet does text-to-speech. It does. It does text-to-speech. If you don't think you want to use your voice, I recommend at least try to do your own voice. But in any event, slide number one, I'm going to make the um, speaker notes visible. See what I did there? I pulled from the bottom of the screen and made my speaker notes available. Um, and by the way, Jane, you make a good point that she said I hated my voice when I started. Here's the thing. The way you sound is not the way I hear you because your voice is coming out of your head going back into your head, through the bones. It's just not working right where I hear it straight. And I'm telling you, your voices sound better than what you think they sound, okay? So anybody, you'd have to have somebody come up and say, you know, Jane, I find your voice to be quite irritating. Well, that's another thing altogether. And I bet you've never had anybody say that. And if they did, they're just being mean. They're jealous. Now, uh, on this slide number one, I'm going to type welcome to uh, my lesson on puppy care. This lesson will take you approximately 20 minutes to complete. When you're finished, you will have an opportunity to be a certified puppy care provider. I'm making this up, whatever you want to do, okay? I'm going to go to slide number two. I'm going to type lesson overview. Uh, let's see, I'm not going to say lesson overview. During this lesson, you will learn the five points of blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, slide number three. Now, again, I'm not just going to repeat what's on screen. Matter of fact, it wouldn't do me a whole lot of good because there's not much on screen. I wouldn't say the words picking your puppy. Uh, the first thing to think about when getting a new puppy is actually selecting a puppy that will work for your lifestyle. For you and your lifestyle. See my point? Um, so I do have a question for you all real quick. And um, uh, what Tom didn't tell you all when you started, when you came to this presentation, that we're actually giving cash prizes here. Um, it's not my money that we're giving. It's Tom's money. We're going to give $50 cold, hard cash to the person that comes up with this. Okay. Tom, thank you, by the way, for volunteering. $50 cold, hard cash. What's that? Oh, he's in my ear saying, don't, don't do that. Okay. So, all right. So here's the thing. It's not, it's not money. It's pride. I'm sorry. They've taken the money away. Here's the question I have for you. What is the average attention span for an adult learner in your e-learning? What is the average attention span for someone watching your content before they get distracted and they do this, which is the kiss of death, Thomas? Oh, oh, uh, oh, I'll just spend some time on this. How much time? What do y'all think? How much time? How much time do you have before your learner gets distracted and maybe wants to check out? Anyone? Anyone? Give me some numbers. Anything? Anything? Looking for something in that chat pod. Haven't seen anything yet. Take a guess. All right. Two minutes. 
Utpala, I probably mispronounced your name. 60 seconds, says Thomas. Uh, so uh, Utpala, 120 seconds. Now uh, Jane is up to 180 seconds, right? Uh, you missed it by this much, 15 seconds. 15 seconds is the average attention span for someone who's going to consume your content. So here's what I'm getting at, Jane. Here's what I'm getting at. No slide should be on screen unless there's interactivity on the screen where they're moving things around and sliding things for longer than 15 seconds. So if you haven't finished communicating the concept on slide number two yet, and you've hit that 15 second mark, it is not a stop sign, by the way. It's not like at 15 seconds, your, your, your learner passes out, okay? Or guaranteed they're gonna pick up their phone. Although we are addicted to these things, you know, we are addicted to them. But 15 seconds is a guide. So 18 seconds, I'm okay. 20 seconds, Jonathan, I'm okay. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. 30 seconds, I'm just really starting to get concerned. Two minutes, you haven't left the slide yet. Dude, get me out of this slide, right? Get me out of here. So if you haven't finished communicating your message in 15 seconds and you still got a lot more to say, that's a second slide with a different visual. How about that? Easy to do, right? Just get yourself some more pictures. It's okay to have a few extra slides for the sake of the whole audience. And here's something you definitely want to take into account. No e-learning lesson should last for more than... How long? How long should your e-learning lesson last? No e-learning lesson should last more for more than, what are we thinking? How long should the whole lesson last? So individual slide, 15 seconds. What are we thinking? You guys are probably thinking about it in typing. It depends on the final answer. It depends, final answer. Uh, no, it is not. It depends. Actually, there is a range here. Sweet spot is five minutes. Sweet spot is five minutes. The range three to seven, you should be done with your lesson. I didn't say done with the whole course because, of course, we have made up of several lessons, right? So between three and seven minutes per lesson, multiple lessons equal the course, several courses equal a catalog, and on and on and on it goes. So uh, none of these slides are going to last for more than... Um, uh, 15 seconds. We're going to be good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Ut Utpala. Yeah. Two to three minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So here's that final slide during this lesson. You learn blah, blah, blah. Okay. We don't have to take it too seriously. And I'm saving again. Now up till this very minute, I haven't done anything on iSpring Suite 10. Because really what most people do is they create their PowerPoint content in PowerPoint like we just did. But this is where iSpring Suite roars because it's saying, okay, now you want to output this and maybe have a quiz and maybe have voiceover audio better than what PowerPoint can put in. And you want to have interactivity. So I'm going to go to the iSpring Suite 10 tab. I'm going to go to um, slide number one. I'm going to go click record audio. And that brings up my slide in presentation view. And here is what I love about typing those notes. My script is right here, ready to go. So all I have to do is rehearse what I'm going to record. And I do recommend you write out a script and you rehearse it. So you make sure that none of the words in your script are going to trip you up. If there's a word that every time you hit it, you mispronounce it. And now it's you can tell that you're slowing down to say that one word. Then I would think, let's just find a, uh, get a thesaurus and find a different word for it, something easier for you to say. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the recorder. I'm going to read. And I'm going to um, uh, go to the next slide and the next slide and the next slide. Here's my next slide icon right here. So I may not read the whole thing. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to do intentionally uh, an audio gaff just to show you how this works. So keep in mind now that this is iSpring that's recording the audio and it does a fantastic job. So I'm going to start the recorder. Welcome to my lesson on puppy care. <coughs> oh, I've got a horrible cold. This lesson will take you approximately 20 minutes to complete. 
when you're finished, you will have an opportunity to be a certified puppy care provider. Okay, I just stopped that audio and now I'm going to the next slide. Hitting record. During this lesson, you will learn the five points of blah, blah, blah. Stopped it. Next slide. See how easy this is? Here we go. Start the recorder. The first thing you need to think about when getting your new puppy is actually selecting a puppy that will work for you and your lifestyle. Next slide. Start the recorder. And during this lesson, you learned yada, yada, yada. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> so Kara said she was coughing this morning. Oh, hey, Kara. I know Kara. I'm going to click OK. All right. Well, that didn't hurt even a little bit, right? And it took me now uh, back into uh, uh, iSpring Suite, and I'm going to click Manage Narration. And that brings up an audio editor, this little clock looking thing. So uh, this utility actually has a very robust, robust set of editing features for the audio. And you all remember I coughed. Uh, you can see here along my timeline, the squiggly line. That squiggly line is known as a waveform. So I'm gonna click once on this first waveform, I'm gonna click edit clip and I'm gonna press the play button. You guys don't have to tell me if you can hear my audio through my headset. I don't know if this system's gonna pick it up or not. <laughs> did you all, did you all hear that? No, <laughs> it was me coughing and saying I got a horrible cold. <laughs> does anybody hear that? So this right here is me coughing. Did anybody hear it? Probably not, huh? It didn't transfer the audio over. Can you confirm? Did you guys hear that? Maybe, yes, maybe no. I haven't heard anything. I'm thinking you all didn't hear it. Okay, uh, okay. But you saw the waveform moving along. So this is me coughing. Well, check it out. I'm simply gonna click delete and I just edited out that audio. There was a bit of a, a second or so before I talked. So I'm gonna select this and delete it. I'm gonna select this part and I'm gonna delete it. How awesome is that? And what I also love is that maybe in this segment right here, maybe when you played it back, you could hear um, I'm here to getting, uh, Jane says there's a button when you can share to share audio. Oh, I didn't see that. I don't want to click anything. I'm a little nervous, Jane. If I click something, it'll take me offline. It would be my luck, right? So trust me, that was me coughing. And this right here is static. So look, I'm going to silence it out. Silence the selection. And that would have made the flat line nothing. So I'm done with that. I click save and close. And now my audio is done, right? Okay, so I'm going to click save and close right here. And I've used now iSpring Suite to record and edit my audio, right? Now, I'm going to actually put a quiz in. So I'm going to go to slide number three. I'm going to insert a blank slide. Okay. Save my work. And I want a quiz. So back I go to the iSpring Suite 10 tab. So you're getting the feeling that, um, that you create your content mostly in PowerPoint, and then the cool stuff comes in from iSpring Suite, right? And I teach you all that cool stuff in the book, including output for SCORM, including videos, uh, scenarios, dialogues, software screen recording, it's all in the book. So, all right, I've got this blank slide and I want a quiz. And it brings up this utility called the quiz maker. So iSpring Suite is a collection of tools. When you, um, when you bring up a screen recorder, it brings up a screen recorder utility. When you bring up the quiz, it brings up iSpring Quiz Maker, but it's all integrated from the iSpring Suite 10 controller tab, right? So I'm gonna click graded quiz. And uh, here is my, uh, my quiz, I'm gonna add a question. So I go to question over here in the upper left and I choose multiple choice. 
And uh, I'm going to type in here, the cutest puppy is, and here's option one. Can you all please in the chat pod tell me your favorite breed of puppy? Uh, I have a golden doodle, so I'm going to go here with the golden doodle. That's not to offend Paisley down here, who's a cavapoo, but Lucy is just, oh, be still my heart. Golden doodle for me. Uh, great Pyrenees as well, but I can never spell Pyrenees, so I'm not going to do it. Give me some feedback. Um, what do you guys like for puppies? What do you have? Do you guys have dogs? Uh, dogs that you love? Cat people? What do we got? So I got the golden doodle there, ready to go. Uh, type in that chat pod what you like for your favorite puppy. Oh, a new fun land. Oh, says Kara. All right. New, the new found land? New fun land? I think it's new fun land. Oh, Husky. Aren't they Barkers there, uh, Sadie? Husky's Bark, right? A lot. Uh, and uh, uh, an Aussie Shepherd. Oh, Tanya. I like those dogs. Aussie Shepherd. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the Great Pyrenees is outside barking now, and she's way away, but she's got such a, such a deep bark. You can, uh, you can really hear her barking. I'm going to go with uh, the Aussie Shepherd as our favorite answer. And notice, by the way, that you can control the feedback for these questions right here, right or wrong. Uh, and you can, uh, if for remediation standpoint, if the learner gets the question wrong, you can use branching to take them to slide 22, where slide 22 talks about uh, the, whatever the right answer was, you see. So you can have all kinds of great remediation here. Uh, the score, I'm going to make it worth 50. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go to question and I'm going to choose true, false. Uh, and the, uh, the true, false questions, uh, dogs are awesome. Oh, I can't spell awesome. Thank you. Dogs are awesome. True. And points 50. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm going to click uh, the player properties here because I want my question, my quiz question, to look exactly like the uh, the background. So uh, let's see, uh, under navigation, uh, there was an option here to um, to have my screen <laughs> to have my screen look like the um, the background. Here it is. Use presentation quiz. Uh, presentation slide is quiz background. So it'll have this nice dark background to it. All right, I'll click submit. Uh, you must complete the question before submitting. All right, so now saving return to the course. Okay, so there is the, uh, the quiz question now. And I wanna see how this whole project's gonna look. So I'm gonna click preview preview the entire presentation. This is not the same thing as slideshow preview. So keep that uh, in the back of your mind. You wanna use the iSpring Suite preview feature. Uh, Kara says when she teaches her stuff online, the ability to spell goes to minimal. Yeah, uh, I'm terrible too, the minute I have to do that. Uh, so you can't hear the audio, but I am talking with my obnoxious voice. So let me click next. There's my lesson overview. Uh, I do have control over these player controls. I'm not going to worry about it. Let me lower the volume here. It's distracting me. And uh, click next. I can control whether these um, this panel is on the right side or the left. It looks like I didn't uh, finish the background, but I'm not going to bother with it. But I could have had the background looking like the background for the puppy. And then uh, I'll click submit. Oh, I didn't answer the question. Uh, it's the uh, Aussie Shepherd. Submit. Nailed it. Continue. True. All dogs are awesome. Submit. Got it again. Man, I feel good about myself. Here's the results. Totally customizable. If you don't like the look and feel of this, I won't get into it now. And then here's the lesson review. Yada, 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 yada. By the way, I do teach in the book that um, you might want to disable these buttons or gray them out. You see how there is no next, so next grays out, and it did it by itself. I love that. There are other utilities that shall go nameless that you have to know how to disable that next button because it stays open the whole time, and that would be irritating because your learners are going to click it, and it's not going to go anywhere. So I don't want to scare you guys, but 
that's it, man. That's all there is to it. Uh, and if I go to my notes, by the way, this isn't exactly Section 508 for accessibility, but it does show your voiceover script in a notes panel, not closed captioning. So there is that. So um, it is worth noting that this is a responsive player. So you can see here, there's little tools that would show you how your lesson's gonna look uh, as learners change devices. So the lesson just gets smaller and smaller and smaller to scale down, but the player on the right is responsive. So this is not responsive e-learning, it's e-learning that'll play on all devices with a responsive player. And I don't want you all to get confused and tell your bosses, it's totally responsive. Um, Articulate Rise does fully responsive. Adobe Captivate does fully responsive. Articulate Storyline does not do responsive design. It has a responsive player. So it's Rise that is the responsive flow, okay? All right, so I'm gonna close the preview. I'm gonna save my work. And no session would be complete if you didn't have a double publish scenario. So when we started today, we publish right away, right? Not messing around. We publish that existing project. If you followed along with me, you have a very small project, but it is a project. And if you want to, if you publish this to your computer and show your boss come Monday morning what you did, you actually have got something to take back to your boss. And that's what I want you to have. So I'm going to click publish. Uh, reminder, publish is on the iSpring Suite 10 tab. It's in the publish group in case you missed it. Uh, the project name is Puppy. I'm going to publish right to my desktop. I'm going to publish as HTML5. I'm not going to worry about the rest of these settings. They're covered in the book, including there is an accessibility mode worth checking out, right? If you need to make your project accessible. I'm simply going to click publish. And here's the thing I want you all to keep in mind that if you get paid for a living, and I think most of you probably do, and you followed along with me to make PowerPoint into e-learning using the iSpring Suite 10 tab, even the trial, that makes you a professional e-learning developer. So take a bow, you're an e-learning developer and a professional, and you are multi-published because today with me, if you followed along, you publish twice. You just don't have to admit, Jonathan, when someone says, oh, where have you been published? Well, to my own computer, but I'm thinking of branching out. You don't need to admit that. Just say I'm a published e-learning author, professional. So let me show you on my desktop where that content went. So I'm looking for the folder called Puppy Publish. There it is, open it up. There should be an index page in there automatically created by iSpring. I had nothing to do with it except I click publish. I can't take credit for it. I didn't name it. I didn't even create that index file. iSpring Suite did. I'll double click index. And my web browser opens up. No matter how big I make the page, the content's going to work. I've got this autoplay screen, which is a replica of the first screen of my project. So make it meaningful. Hit the autoplay icon and my presentation now is taken off. You do learn in the book how to disable, let me mute this. Uh, you do learn how to, mute, how to disable this previous button so it's gray because there is nothing previous of this, right? So you want to gray that out. Uh, so that doesn't happen by itself, but the last next button does. And here is my presentation now along with my notes and a table of contents automatically from PowerPoint. I wasn't kidding around, folks. You built this in less than an hour. I mean, total time to actually do it, probably like eight minutes because I talked a lot around all this stuff. But literally, you took a PowerPoint presentation to e-learning in minutes. And I have done this with PowerPoint presentations that are 15, 20 slides. And uh, unfortunately, a client had a PowerPoint presentation over 100 slides. And I tried to convince them, you got to cut that down. That's going way out of bounds for your five minutes. They didn't want to do it. So at the end of the day, I'm not looking to fight City Hall, as they say in the States. I just did it. I wasn't happy about it. Okay, so that's it. So I'm curious now what you guys think. huh? Uh, is anybody impressed with iSpring Suite? Because look, you, you think maybe uh, I, I made all that up as I was going along, but there was nothing can there. We did this from scratch, which, you know, kind of scares you. I think uh, anybody who's done uh, presenting, uh, Kara can tell you, this can go horribly wrong, right? Uh, so... That's it. It actually worked out. What do you guys think? Do you have any questions for me? Comments?
We got about five minutes, right? What are we thinking? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's usually a little bit of a delay. So just while people are getting any questions in that they've got, um, just say I thought I thought it was re really great. I think it's a tool that um, I've not never really used enough. Uh, and then we were chatting the other day. I sort of, I've sort of got it, and it just sort of sits there, and I often forget it's there. Yeah. And this has really kind of kicked me. You think oh, I should I should make more use of that. It's fantastic. Um, I don't always faster. need to. I right. don't always need to reach for a very more much more complex tool that's going to take me twice as long. Right. Right. The thing I love about that, Tom, is that you already know how to use PowerPoint. At least you know you, many people think they do, right? Well, so you yes. already have it. So <laughs> definitely learn how to use PowerPoint, right? And how to avoid death by PowerPoint. But if you've got that, I spring sweet man, just kaboom. Makes quick work out of it. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, so um, in every accessibility workshop I've taken, I've been told to avoid using decorative images like the plague. Um, if you have to mark an image as decorative, don't include the image. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. I know this is something we actually discussed yesterday as well. Um, so uh, I'll, Kevin, I'll, I'll give you the floor on that one. Okay, so a background image. So we're, we're thinking accessibility here. We're worried about someone who is blind uh, being able to consume the content. So um, I do want everybody to keep in mind that it is, it is an awesome thing to make your projects accessible to the entire world and, and any kind of disability. But keep in mind that 98 point something percent of your audience is visually capable, physically capable, all the rest of it, no disability. So you do not want to... Uh, be punitive and, and, and damage your project to make sure it's accessible. That being said, you should follow the standards to the limits of the tool so that if something is decorative, like that background picture for the puppy, I would not have put, I would have labeled it in like storyline as decorative. So the, mm -hmm. so the reader reads me the content. So uh, on that slide with the three puppies, because I was teaching you how to do this, this, and this, I would have added accessibility text to the three puppy images, but not the overall background. So no, I, I would not tell you to avoid images in the background like the plague, uh, but certainly make them accessible as appropriate. And uh, the, uh, the WCAG, w, uh, the, the governing body that, that, mm. that talks about accessibility from the World Wide Web Consortium, call it the WCAG. Um, uh, what I'm striving for is double A accessibility because AAA at that point, that's just text-based. You know, there's just really nothing to it. It's just a bunch of text on the screen, which would give the lesson concepts, but visually it's not gonna keep your learner engaged. And we as educators have got to educate, but we also have a responsibility of keeping your learners engaged. And one thing, big thing there is keep your lesson short and sweet. Rel relevant, short and sweet. Get me in, get me out. Keep teaching what I need to know. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that that seems to be the sentiment in the in the comments as well. Yep. Uh, Jonathan saying he's always wary of uh, anything that's absolute um, spot the Star Wars fan in the uh, in the crowd. Right. Only, only the Sith deal in absolutes. It always depends. Right. Yes. It's, uh, yes. it's always a judgment call. Yeah. Um, I would say really, that uh, when it comes to e-learning, what you really I mean, you'd love to say you're WCAG AAA, but then you just don't have anything that's visually Appealing. And you don't want to say it in such a way that would be offensive, right? Because we're trying mm. to be accessible to everybody without discriminating against anybody. Absolutely. Um, uh, oh, the um, Kara's posted a, a link to the AA standards in there. Um, that's pretty good. The Kara. WCAG site's fantastic for that. Um, loads of people here uh, talking about how cool the tool is. Uh, excited to use it more uh, from Rachel. Um, yeah, great stuff. Kara's a Sith. A Sith, a Sith, not a Sith Lord, Kara, just a Sith. <laughs> you guys are nerding out a little bit too much now. Uh, all right. This is, this uh, is it. Okay. Will. All right. Well, uh, so let's see. Uh, don't get her going on Star Wars. Uh, okay. Uh, so what do we think? We got another minute there for questions? Yeah. If anyone's got any questions, now is the time. We'll save the Star Wars conversation for another time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so the uh, the PowerPoint deck, don't forget, which you can grab off of that link that Tom shared early on. That has links directly to me. Come uh, come, get in touch, touch with me. Send me an email if you're, if you're thinking about, well, what about this? And I spring, I'm happy to answer it. And, or if you need help development, we support that as well. And there's the um, book. 
and we'll include the link um, to those source files uh, with the catch up link on YouTube as well. Okay. Um, so people will be able to follow on there. So if you weren't able to catch the chat flies fast on here, I know. So if you didn't catch it at the start, you can either scroll back up or I'll repost it in the event and on the catch up video. Yeah, I'm going to leave that Dropbox link up for probably about a month. Brilliant. Um, so give people a chance to go grab it. Fantastic. Um, well, I think uh, there's no more questions. So it just remains for me to say thank you so much uh, for, for presenting for us today. I think that was really interesting. Loads to take away. Um, and uh, everyone else, we are now heading towards our very last session. Enjoy In your last session, everyone. In just 15 minutes, we've got the uh, discussion panel Beyond the Blend, Mixed Learning Solutions, led by um, the ID fanatic himself, Mitch Moldovsky, uh, with Jonathan Rock and Kara North joining in. Um, so don't go anywhere. We shall be back shortly. <laughs>